And from Canberra, I'm joined by Richie Merzian, the Climate and Energy Program Director at the Australia Institute. Richie, a very warm welcome to the show. Um, a promise of net zero emissions by 2050, but with no plan to actually legislate it. How is that going to work? Uh, well, basically, the government has just promised the status quo that Australia will continue to be one of the largest, it's the third largest exporter of fossil fuels in the world after Russia and Saudi Arabia, arguably the largest for coal, the largest for liquefied natural gas. The plan is to continue being a major fossil fuel producer and exporter and to hope that technology and offsets will get Australia to net zero by 2050 without legislating, without having an immediate impact and with having a number of loopholes within it. So it's not really much of a plan and it's certainly nothing that the government wants to put on the floor of parliament because it's unlikely to even pass if it does ever go there. I think the world looks at Australia and its bushfires, at the damage to its coral reefs, and sees a country which stands a lot to lose from climate change. Uh, why is this such a controversial topic in Australian politics? Yeah, it, it, it is quite puzzling, even for Australians. I mean, seven out of 10 Australians want to see a net zero pathway that's strong and aligned with the Paris Agreement. And six out of 10 Australians want to see no more coal or gas or oil projects, new ones. You're right, like there was massive bushfires two years ago. There's been regular floods and droughts and extreme heat and the Great Barrier Reef will go with more than 1.5 degrees of global warming. The problem is the Australian government has aligned its interests with the fossil fuel interests. In Australia, whilst fossil fuels are a major export, they don't provide a lot of jobs, they don't provide a lot of income, but they have a lot of political influence particularly in some regional seats. And that's what's held Australia back for so many decades. The plan, the, the hope really, is that there's enough support, all the state governments in Australia, a lot of industry and the majority of the public, according to the Australian Institute's Climate of the Nation, support stronger action. And the hope is that will be the case at the next federal election next year. In the meantime, unfortunately, we have more of the same, which is more fossil fuels, at the end of the day, net zero by 2050 that allows fossil fuels to flourish is a fraud. Now, you personally have previously represented the Australian government at the UN Climate Change Conference. Uh, in your view, what needs to be done in order to achieve uh, that goal of net zero? The first thing to do would be to put a moratorium, uh, a ban on any new coal or gas projects. Basically, you can't transition to a clean energy future if you're growing the problem. And much like in Germany, where a deal was negotiated to phase down coal, so too does that need to happen in Australia. Because Australia, the majority of its coal and gas go to China, Korea and Japan. All three have net zero plans, which means that Australia's exports will eventually dwindle. The best thing to do now is to stop opening up new mines and start phasing down so that everyone is taken on that transition plan rather than disrupted. The second thing is to actually set targets, 100% renewable energy this decade, 100% clean cars, clean electric cars, because Australia was at the back of the pack on, on clean vehicles, uh, moving off gas for heating, um, and then also looking at how you transition the agricultural sector. All those technologies are possible, What's missing is the political will. All right, Richie Merzian from the Australia Institute, thank you very much for joining us on, this, on the show. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas.